Well, welcome everyone to the field walkthrough and question and answer part of the NorCal Regional Kickoff. Um, we are very lucky today to have a great group of people here with me. Uh, I have, immediately to my right, I have Rick Swan, one of our NorCal head referees. To his right is Jeff Green, uh, another one of our NorCal head referees, and also a World Championship Division head referee. And uh, joining us by surprise today is Joe Corrado, one of the other members of the Game Design Committee. So we got a really great group. And I'm Mark Edelman, um, the NorCal uh, Program Delivery Partner, and also part of the Game Design Committee, and your chief referee for the world. I thought you were global. Global, intergalactic. intergalactic. <laughs> um, but so really the point of this session is to give you a chance to ask questions about the field. We have a couple of cameras set up at various points around the field that we can zoom in more closely on pieces. Um, but the guy, the real goal is to give you information to help you get bootstrapped and kickstarted uh, in getting your, your uh, season going. With that, questions? Yep, so as a reminder, uh, you need to ask your question in the question box. So we're gonna start off with a couple that came in the earlier session. Uh, question around freight and how many pieces of freight and what are the all the different types of freight that you can carry at any one time? So there, there are basically three different kinds of freight. There are boxes, cargo, and ducks. Additionally, there are different weights of boxes. So there are light boxes. I'm not a very good robot. Light boxes, medium boxes. Medium boxes have two additional weights added to them to make them a little heavier. And there are heavy boxes. The heavy boxes have four additional weights added to make them significantly heavy. There's a few of our light blocks that are also marked with a black X. These are our preload block boxes. They're only really part of the autonomous portion of the gameplay, and they'll be the ones that you're required to preload at the beginning of the match. Um, in terms of the number you can carry at a time, you may carry in your robot no more than one freight, right? So one freight. In addition to that one freight, you are allowed to carry your team shipping element. Hopefully that answered that question. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we do have a question around the video feed. If you are not seeing the video feed, we actually have a really great close-up. I think of a neutral, is that a warehouse? That is the warehouse. Great, so please make sure you're seeing the video feed because that's an important part of this session. Okay, next question. Um, also on, I'm gonna keep on freight, is can you uh, tell me how many heavy of the boxes are needed to tip a, the shared shipping hub? So if you could uh, load that shared shipping hub up with heavy boxes, how many does it take? Oh, here we go. One. One heavy. Okay, and then how many of the light? One medium. One medium, okay. Any light? Two lights. And two lights, excellent. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, I think those are all of the um, freight type of questions, so let's move on. Um, can you pick up those weighted game boxes, the, the freight boxes, with a magnet? So I think that's a great question for uh, robot parts and game annual part one, right? Uh, to legal. Electromagnets wouldn't be, but a magnet by itself 
there's no prohibition in the right. materials for that. I, I, I don't didn't actually test to see whether or not they're magnetic when I put these all together. I would kind of guess they are, but I don't know. I think we have anything magnetic. Okay. Moving on. Um, are we required to buy the freight items from Andy Mark? Uh, so the blocks are an uh, Andy Mark only product. They are custom made for First Tech Challenge. And the only place to get them new is from First Tech is from Andy Mark. Um, they have been used in several years worth of FTC games. So if you've got a source from reusing old ones, please. That was part of the idea was to allow teams to take advantage of reusing. And something new that you may not notice unless you look really closely at the blocks, they actually have recycling symbols in them this year. So they are recyclable. Um, so we're trying to encourage intelligent reuse. The balls, the, the cargo part of the freight, they're actually a commercial product from a company called Strike Three. Um, it's got an odd spelling to Strike Three. Um, you, you, you can buy those uh, commercially uh, if you wish. I do believe the Andy Mark pricing is probably a little bit better than buying them directly. Um, plus, we like to support Andy Mark. They're a big part of our First Tech Challenge family, and um, you know the, everything we do to support them keeps them supporting you. And um, and if you already have blocks. You can buy just the weighted inserts, right? So you can go online, just buy the inserts. And ducks, can we source ducks elsewhere? Ducks might be a little harder to match exactly. Um, there are, uh, as we've learned, an incredible number of people who make <laughs> tiny little rubber ducks. So um, again, if you're looking to try to match exactly and to match well with the vision models that are built into the uh, programming SDK, you probably want to go ahead and get the ducks from Andy Mark. <clears throat> okay. Uh, are alliances allowed to take cargo from any of the warehouses or even anywhere on the field, like the ducks on the are the blue red? Are those on game? Uh, alliance specific areas. The, the warehouses do not belong to a particular alliance. So take them where, uh, from, from where you wish. That's right. They're, they're explicitly alliance neutral. What about ducks? That you can't take them. So the, the ducks themselves, um, once they're into the play of, uh, playing field and have been started, Again, they don't belong to anyone. Now, you've got to watch out during the autonomous period of not interfering with autonomous scoring for the opposing alliance. So, for example, if I'm the red alliance, I maybe don't want to go over and mess the ducks on the blue alliance side of the field until after the autonomous period is over. Speaking of ducks, can my robot just sit near its my alliance side carousel and just sit and deliver ducks. It could do that. During autonomous, you're only going to have the one duck loaded on the carousel. Uh, and then you're not going to offload any ducks from the carousel until the end game. And you could do as, as many as you want, one at a time. How long does it, uh, or I guess, what is the maximum velocity you can spin the carousel without losing the duck? No limitation in the game. So if uh, you spin them too fast, your ducks are likely going to launch out of the field. So you maybe don't want to do that. <laughs> Excellent demonstration by Joe. Joe's good at breaking them. <clears throat> How many ducks come with a partial kit? Uh, a half field worth of ducks is, I believe, a I bag of a dozen. Oh, is it a dozen? So there's actually a couple of spares. I think it's 10 ducks on the field as part of the standard uh, field setup, but there's a dozen in the bag. Any 
Can you move the duck on the barcode? Uh, I guess I don't understand your question. The ducks are, the barcode is randomized at the beginning. So maybe they're wondering if you can choose a different option. Yeah, you want to talk about the randomization maybe a little bit, particularly for our rookies that don't know how that works. And just so you know, it is hard to hear the panel except for Mark. So we really need outdoor voices and a lot of projection in order to hear you well. Hopefully I'm projecting better now. Um, so normally the way we do randomization is we have big dice that we, that we throw and that tells us uh, what the orientation is on the field. So the robots on the field aren't really able to choose that randomization if that's what the question is. Um, the ducks are gonna be where they're gonna be based on the dice. It, it's part of the autonomous task is to figure out where the duck is and then change your robot's behavior based on where the duck is. Yeah, there's a little bit of echo. Uh, so if only one person could be unmuted at a time, that would help as well, I think. I think I moved too close to the speaker. During autonomous, a robot can certainly move the duck that's on the barcode. Uh, it'd be smart to find out where it is first. What can you do with the ducks once they're on the field from the carousel? They, they are freight, feet in the freight. So that means they can be scored into the Alliance shipping hub or the shared shipping hub. On the randomizing, um, Appendix D shows the position of the duck and which scoring points it is. Are they mirrored on the other half of the field or is it the same position wise? So from a robot view, the randomization pattern on the barcodes will look identical. So if they're closest key. to the audience on one side, they're furthest from the audience on the other side. That's right. The duck's beaks always point the same direction <clears throat> from the robot's perspective. So the beaks always point toward the audience. Is it the, the oh, duck closest to the audience on both sides? The, the beaks point towards the right from the robot's view. So if the robot is against the wall, the outer walls, that's the position that you're talking about. Yeah, right, starting position. So just to be clear, the, the ducks point different directions when they're blue versus their opposite directions. From the audience's perspective, yes. But from the, the robot's, robot's perspective. No. From the audience's perspective. Is this position one or three? Okay. Did we answer the question of how many ducks come in a partial kit? 12. 12. 12. And okay. so 24 in a full kit? Moving on to the obstacle. Can you uh, talk what is the obstacle made out of? The barrier. Yeah, the barrier. So if you're a veteran team, the pipes are the same pipe material that's been used in several seasons. It's uh, equivalent to PVC. The little brackets uh, are actually a clever reuse of the brackets from two years ago's game, um, Skystone. It was just an easy way of uh, saving a little money in terms of the development of the game. They didn't need to create a new mold. Uh, turns out making molds for plastic parts is really expensive. <laughs> yeah, so the, the pipes are one inch diameter. So they're basically the equivalent of a three quarter inch PVC pipe. 
Is that something that someone could make on their own, or do they need those special brackets? Um, you can go to the you can go to the DIY guide, and they will show you how to make them. Great. What other DIY things on the field are possible? Uh, the carousel is uh, is a uh, DIY object. The the hubs though are not. You have to buy the hubs. There's some some pieces that are just really hard to get a good analog to with off the shelf pieces. The blocks and balls and ducts and shipping hubs are the primary examples in this year's game. <clears throat> Can you talk about the beginning of the game again? So the robot is against the wall. You randomize the field and then the gameplay starts. So there's a question around moving the duck or the alliance's um, element, its own element that it brought to the game. Uh, are there penalties for moving that uh, on the barcode, which I'm assuming they're talking only during the uh, autonomous period at the beginning of the match? So um, I'm going to answer from the perspective of I'm a red robot and I'm interacting with a red barcode. So um, it doesn't matter which, whether it's a duck or a team shipping element, there's no consequence for picking it up and moving it. Really, the objective is to identify which position and then to score the preload block into the right level on the Alliance shipping hub. So this setup we've got here right now is Three, which means I want to try to get the preload block onto level three, right? That would get me a great bonus. But if I had done that based on identifying my team shipping element, that bonus doubles, right? So, but there's no consequence. So for example, if I'm a red robot, I could come out, identify my team shipping element, go ahead and pick it up and then deliver my preload block. That's all okay. So your shipping element is not freight, does not follow the rule of only one piece of freight at a time? That's correct. Great. Thank you. I think that, is there any other barcode uh, interactions during the game? No, they are really an autonomous path. Okay, here's an interesting question. Uh, so we're in a uh, live full field configuration in an alliance. Can both teams in that alliance stack capstones uh, on their hub or is it just one per alliance? It is both. You can, you stack one and then you can put the other one on top or whatever. We can't hear you, Jeff, we can't hear you. Be really good. I'm going to hold the thing, <laughs> then it's closer. Um, yes. So yes, you can do both, uh, and you just put one on top of the other, or whatever the configuration is that you come up with that has it fully supported by that center post. So that might be a clever hint to teams to design your team shipping element to be capable. When do ducks score? Duck, ducks are freight. Pieces of freight, once you're on the floor. The other way they score is, of course, dropping off the carousel under the floor. The delivery. So the carousel can be used throughout the game? Not between, only during a autonomous and the end game. Not during the first minute and a half of driver control. Okay, so ducks, just let me make sure I'm gonna read back because I have some complicated questions around this. Uh, ducks can be scored during autonomous, brought onto the field during autonomous, and they can be brought onto the field from the carousel during the end game and scored at that time. Those are the only two times, is that right? So, so ducks, so ducks, because they're free, this can be scored anytime. 
bringing a duck onto the field is only legal during autonomous and then end game. Ah. Gotta go slow. Good demonstration yes. of maximum turning velocity yeah. there. The question uh, was who loads the carousel? So initially, the setup team will put the duck on the carousel. After that, it, the, uh, the team member loads them on. And you'll notice that the drive team is not including a human player this year. So that means that one of the six people, two drivers and two coaches, needs to be responsible for the placement of the ducks. I think we answered the magnet and electromagnet question already, but just if you could get somebody join a bit late and just go back and through that one uh, around yeah, magnets. We have tested, and, and the weighted uh, blocks are magnetic. So if you have a surface to attach them to, you can do that. So magnets are okay, electromagnets are not okay. Back to the ducks in the carousel, uh, someone has asked if you can rescore the ducks, can you take them out of the field once they've come on the field so they can be rescored again? No. Joe's favorite answer. <laughs> we have a question about um, the picking up the elements from the warehouse. Can you help clarify when you can pick them up, where you have to be? In other words, can you have just a delivery robot who kind of sits in there and, and delivers them out? And, and if you have to be completely inside or just inside to pick one up? The one has to be, the robot has to be completely inside the warehouse to pick up an object. And then they, it has to be to be delivered. It has to be completely outside the warehouse, and only again one at a time. So there's actually a, a rule called warehouse operation that defines the sequence. <clears throat> so start out completely in, pick up completely out, score. So if you have something dangling off your robot, you could potentially make this a very difficult task. It's good to remember that the warehouse is defined by the white tape, not the barrier. I'd also say that there's not a lot of space between here and here if you're trying to deliver to this, right? So a long robot is gonna force you to drive in, then you might have to do it somewhere else. So a short robot may be advantageous here. Interesting. Yeah, what is that That's dimension? Exciting. Can you uh, measure the dimension between that shared shipping hub to the barrier? And while you're getting a tape measure and measuring, uh, there's a question around rule G19, which I don't know what that is, but uh, ask for a clarification around G19. Well, so from the warehouse, with, well, so we can do both. Okay, so from the warehouse to the edge of the shared shipping hub is pretty much 18 inches and a quarter. But from the barrier is 12 and a half. So. Okay, so we, we have looked up G19. That's the late start of the autonomous period. If the question can be sort of embellished a little, it's a rule. What's the can you, it says, can you clarify rule G19? So there's some confusion over what that means. I don't know if it's been reworded or rewritten since last year. Uh, this is a returning coach. So when the field personnel that are uh, starting the match say three, two, one, go, you must press that uh, start immediately if you're going to run autonomous. If you pause a second, 
and start it, that's a late start to autonomous and is going to get a penalty based on G19. You must start your autonomous at the go. Are you required to have an autonomous? You are not required to have an autonomous. Okay, so if there's more questions on G19, please ask more specific questions. Uh, I think we've addressed this, but can you go over that barrier? Is, what are the rules around going over the barrier? Don't destroy it. Yeah, <laughs> they say, yes, you can go over the barrier. It's just there to make your life more difficult. And, and the, the can <laughs> de depends on what you build. Yeah, probably. probably would be a good idea to have exposed gears and you know, saw the plastic parts in half. That that might be the only real dangerous part here. Yeah. Are you allowed to stabilize your shipping hub while you deliver freight? So are you allowed to grass grapple, hold on to the shipping hub while delivering freight? We have general rules that prohibit grab, grasp, grapple of game elements. And I don't think that there's an exception for the shipping hub. But grab, grasp, grapple is not the same as stabilize. So, you know, just thinking about leaning up against it while you're putting blocks on, that sounds okay. I could probably do this, right? Yep. Like, okay. I'm not grabbing it. I'm just... You stabilize against the side, but you couldn't like grab. I can't screws. hold it and start throwing stuff on it, right? Right. There's also a question but, about can they I rotate remember, it that at the end when it robots are away. So if you, even if you held it and then let go, we're going to count it when it's let go. When it comes to rest. Can you rotate that hub? Are you allowed to rotate it? That was another part of the question. No. Well, for the Alliance shipping hubs, uh, if you're rotating your own, that's no big deal. The shared shipping hub, if you're rotating it in a way that affects gameplay for the opposing Alliance or benefits you, I think the answer is going to be no. But remember, you still wouldn't be able to grab grasp grapple in order to do that rotation. Okay. I think we've got enough shipping hub questions. How tall are the hubs? Do they vary between the shared one versus the non-shared one? Or are they the sa all the same height? And all, all the main, but, uh, so the, the they're manual? actually built from the same pieces. So there's just additional pieces added for the Alliance shipping hub. So the center post is the same. The bottom tray is the same. The underneath wobble base is the same. The height is about 21 inches. The top of it. Yeah, the, the game manual has heights for each of the three levels. It, it has the heights for each level. That's the other question of that is the space between the levels. So that's in game manual part two? Yes, ma'am. Is the okay. alliance specific hub counted as balanced at the at end game if there's nothing on it? Yes. I think we've addressed this one before, but we'll say it again. Um, are you allowed to pick up more than one piece of freight uh, in the loading zone? So I assume I don't know what a loading zone is, but in the I don't know if they mean from the carousel or the warehouse. Is there a the warehouse? You can only pick up one at a time. And what about from the carousel? Can you uh, hold on to more than one duck at a time? You can only control one duck at a time. You can also control a team of one, one, one freight, including a duck. So the human that's part of the drive team could pick up more than one duck at a time in preparation for putting them onto the carousel. But Rick's right, it's one freight. That means a duck, a box, or a cargo uh, per robot at a time. Uh, 
So we, at the beginning, we did the how many of the boxes does it take to tip the shared shipping hub? How many of the balls? I don't know what those are called. Uh, cargo, cargo, or how many? How many ducks? Two balls, Two balls tilted. Three. three. Okay, so three balls or three cargo. Two how balls many ducks? Is not quite enough. We need three balls. Three. Okay. And it also depends where you put them. How many ducks does it take? Uh, you can have one, one heavy duck, one no. medium duck. No, 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 no. Oh, sorry, no. sorry. <laughs> they would take a lot of ducks. <laughs> There's only one kind of duck, right? I think it's a whole flock of ducks. But now my ducks aren't all in a row. You've been waiting years to say that, haven't you? Oh, yeah, there's been so many duck jokes. So how many One, we got on there now? Five is kind of almost. Six is pretty well down. Well, and how are you going to measure five, touching seven, the floor? Seven. No, no, I think it's eight. Yeah, don't count on your, don't count on your duck delivery system to make you a lot of points there. <laughs> I was going to make a, a joke about not counting your ducks till they're hatched, but they're obviously already hatched. <laughs> how many, uh, <laughs> uh, how are you going to measure that it's tilted uh, to the side? Does it actually have to be touching or just tilted at the end to count? <laughs> We're going to determine as quickly as we can, is it touching or not? And we're going to do this visually from a distance, so no, no paper sliding underneath. So we'll give it our best shot. Our, our razor sharp vision of our crack referee crews. Right, so so the, the spec is that it has to be touching. So if you want those points, make it obvious that it's touching. Great. Uh, I think we've addressed this on how you pick up freight from the warehouse, but it says, can the robot just have an arm that reaches into the warehouse to grab cargo or reach robot out to, to the shipping hub? Robot I think we've, we've addressed this. But... Mm -hmm. You can't reach over. Right. So that's not legal. That's not legal. That's legal. I don't know if you have a better camera angle for that, Mark. Uh, Joe, if you come over to this warehouse. Go ahead. This is not legal. Because the arm is hanging over outside. So it's not good. legal to pick up not or good. deliver, right? So, so again, remember, there's a warehouse operation. Start completely out, come completely in, pick up a, a freight, go completely out, and now go score it. And exactly one at a time. Exactly. So I've, uh, again, there's questions around ducks on carousel and whether during autonomous, an end game, which are the two only two times the carousel can move, who puts the ducks one at a time on the carousel, and can multiple ducks be delivered during autonomous? So it's exactly one duck during autonomous. The human, the humans in the drive team are not allowed to put a duck onto the carousel other than an end game. So there's one duck that starts there at the beginning of the match, but just one during autonomous. And in terms of who puts it on, it's any member of the drive team. Well, the, the, in autonomous, the field setup people would place that duck there. Before the match starts. Before the match starts. End game, any member of the drive team. So in, in theory, in autonomous, there's a duck on the field, if they leave it there, and one on the carousel. So two ducks at most could be scored during autonomous is that correct three three there's two barcodes and one on the carousel four then and right two. technically there's five there's the opposing alliances two ducks 
but that comes with a risk. <clears throat> so am I allowed to interact with the duck on the opposing alliance's carousel? Only if you want penalties. No, no, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to interact with the opposing alliances carousel at any time. Uh, the question was about barcodes. So you can you can pick those ducks up after autonomous is over because you're no longer interfering with their scoring. And and once the duck is delivered and has struck the floor, it's fair game. That's interesting. Am I allowed to roll over into their little box there in the front, which I don't know what's called? uh in order to pick up that duck that's a storage unit and there are no prohibitions about being in the storage unit um, but it's a constrained area so you got to watch out for things like blocking access um, i believe there's no descoring from the storage unit so you got to be careful again about whether or not they've scored anything in there right it, it's always a good idea to stay away from your opposing alliances area during autonomous because if you block if you have any effect on their autonomous, you're going to get a penalty. Right. So. And again, the robot um, during the teleop period, the carousel is not being used. Is that correct? It's only end game. Right. That's correct. So during end game, there's no prohibition that I have to move in and out away from the carousel, like there is in the warehouse. Is that correct? The only prohibition is that that you you cannot place a duck while the carousel is moving, right? The, the carousel needs to be still, and the duck needs to be placed against the back side of the sweeper. But yes, you could build a conveyor belt that goes just there for end game specifically. It would be an interesting strategy, certainly. But the duck has to hit the floor before you touch it. You can't catch it midair. Okay. There's confusion how you counted five ducks during autonomous. Can you go back through the math of five ducks possibly uh, available? I guess you technically it's six. So there are potentially four ducks on barcodes. And, you know, autonomous period touching the opposing alliances, ducks might be really risky. And there are two ducks on carousels. How are there four ducks on barcodes? There's two red and two blue. Ah, even though you're currently only showing one. That is correct. Well, so it's one on the, the front side barcode, one on the back side barcode on both sides of the field. Thank you for that. So there's barcodes on the front half and the back half. Yes. Right. So each robot can be placed so they can each see their own barcode. Got it. Can the human stop the carousel or do you have to wait for it to stop on its own volition? Pretty sure you're going to need to wait for it to stop. I think the humans are prohibited from interacting with the carousel while it's moving. But the robot could stop it. Absolutely. The, the carousel actually presents a little bit of a pinch hazard. So one of the things you'll find in your kit when you buy it is a little spacing tool. There should be about a three quarter inch space between the carousel platform and the sweeper arm to minimize the chance of somebody getting pinched in that. So we really want to be careful about making sure you're not touching it while it's moving. The field setup already has the boxes and cargo in the warehouses. How are they split? Right, roughly 50-50. We're not going to measure them precisely. And, and it's important to remember that those warehouses are alliance neutral. Both warehouses are accessible to all robots. What is the maximum that you can put on a level, like that top level or bottom level of the wobble goal, of the Alliance specific wobble goal? I don't know. There is no maximum. How high can you set? One at a time. How delicately can you place them there? 
That looks like eight. Can you do multiple levels? That looks like maybe almost 16. Yeah. Go with 62. I think there's some interesting videos that can be uh, had for uh, <laughs> for how many you can put on that top wobble goal and keep it from uh, so long, There's an example that looks like half the field's worth fits and balances. I, I'm just impressed that Joe is so well balanced. Me too. <laughs> Go, Joe. <laughs> Uh, now, if the Alliance's shipping hub now falls over, do you lose all those points? Do they fall off? Yes. So all the scoring in this year's game is end of match when things come to rest. If the if the, it tilts and they come off, they're fair game, and uh, I can scoop them up one at a time. Is that right? Can I push Absolutely. more than one? Cannot push more than one. Uh, am I allowed to push out of the warehouse? One at a time, as long as you follow the warehouse operation and the robot starts completely out, gathers the block completely in, and finishes both the block and robot completely out. What if I'm grappling with a, an opposing alliance robot and they, we, in that <clears throat> competition, we tilt uh, one or the other of the alliance specific shipping hubs? What does that penalty look like? Is it based on how many pieces of cargo are, or pieces of freight that are in there? Or how does the penalties work where there may be oh. shared responsibility? That's always one of those things that ends up being a judgment call by the referees at the time from what they see. Um, they're usually looking for who is the creator of the problem um, and what's involved, right? So is it a descoring? Is it an interference? Is it pinning? Uh, so there's a lot of things that could play into that. Um, it's really tough to answer hypothetical questions precisely. So read up on all of those, and when it happens at your events, talk to your head referee. Uh, if I'm rolling the cargo out of the warehouse and I lose control over it and I'm not completely out of the warehouse, can somebody, other robot, pick that cargo up? As long as your robot finishes the warehouse operation, and ends completely outside, then yeah, that would be okay. Do I have the to end up outside is to after? Follow that warehouse operation. So uh, before they pick it up, or how do you like how how does that work? What's the sequence of that? It seems to me the, the question is, is saying if I picked up a, a a block and I've almost delivered it and it fails, it falls out. Now they're not going to get credit for passing that. Uh, block out, but it is available freight to do something with yeah. So they they need to finish the warehouse operation. Right. So the robot needs to finish the transition, otherwise that block is not currently eligible. Right. So if you're in a situation, you know, make it really obvious, right? Joe mentioned earlier, when in doubt, just make it obvious. Oops, and you finish the operation, then come back to get more. Would two robots fit in a warehouse at a time? What's the... Oh, absolutely. The warehouse is, is four foot square. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, weight inserts back on that. Does it matter which hole? And uh, also does the weight um, come with the partial kit? So yes, a half field set of weights comes with the half field set. And yes, you kind of want to make sure you put the weights in the proper holes. 
So I'm going to carefully turn over. This is one of the heavy blocks. So the, on this side, they're in diagonally opposite corners. When I turn it over, you'll see they're in the opposite diagonal corners. So the, the goal is that the block maintains balance around its center. Similar for the, the medium weight block, they're in diagonally opposite corners. So again, Can you put it a little lower? We can't, we can't see it. Mark, put a, little, put a little lower. Yeah, there you go. Right. And those there are defined. A yeah, there's a and pattern the, defined. The field, field assembly instructions include that direction. Okay. We, we have a lot of similar questions that we've answered, so I'm not going to answer them again around how many freight you can carry, it's exactly one, how many boxes to tip, uh, you know, I think that's all of that stuff will um, be something that you'll find out. I think there's a lot there. Um, there's an interesting question, if I drop the duck outside the field, so the robot is spinning it too fast, I'm assuming the human player can, can reload that one once the carousel comes to a stop. So the, the short answer is yes. The longer answer is how long it takes for them to get that duck back depends somewhat on where it ends up. If it's close, um, it's reasonable for the human player just to pick it up and think about it still being in the loading dock. If it's like six feet out the front of the field, they're going to need to wait for field personnel to bring that duck back to the loading dock. We have a great rookie question. Um, so brand new rookies, not sure what to order. Uh, do I need to order a, a full field? Do I? What do I need uh, if I'm a rookie team with nothing for so this year's game? It depends on how much space you have. If you don't have space to set up a 12 foot square playing field, maybe ordering a full field doesn't make sense. Right. It is certainly possible to practice with a fractional field. Um, many teams have been doing that for many years. Uh, so it, it really depends on you. Uh, also depends maybe on, on how much money you have to spend. Right. The half field option is roughly half the cost. So if you're really tight for funds, buying the half field and allowing you to practice with that might allow you to spend more on your robot. The perimeter and the tiles uh, also are not cheap. Uh, but they are usable year after year after year, right? This this particular perimeter has been getting played for six or seven years now, right? The tiles, I, I buy new tiles every year just because ours go through a lot of wear and tear, but a typical team has a set of tiles they'll use for many years. Um, I would strongly recommend getting the tile. Um, in terms of driving practice, they really do make a big difference in the terms of how the robot behaves, right? Robot on tile is different than robot on carpet, is different than robot on concrete. You don't have to buy the same box. You can build that out of any can you want to. That's right. The, the perimeter can be made of all kinds of different materials. There's a great DIY low cost perimeter option that's part of the first resources. Where can I get foam tiles besides Andy Mark? Uh, they're actually manufactured by soft tiles. And if you tell them you're an FTC team, I believe they give you a discount. Can you say that name again? It, it broke up a bit. Soft Tiles. And are, is Planet Learning selling tiles this year? Uh, so we have a small quantity. I haven't figured out how and when to uh, pass them on to the community. Because we didn't do events last year, in person, we didn't buy new tiles last year. So I'm still selling off what we had from two years ago. So stay tuned. When you buy another rookie question, when you buy the half field, uh, or when you go to practice maybe with another team, uh, red and blue are different, right? They're opposite you know, kind of um, one is left, one is right. How do you know which side you're going to have to prepare for? So there's a general rule 
the red side of the field is on the right from the audience's perspective. So you all right now are looking from the audience side of the field, red's on the right. Um, other than the color of the, the trays on the shipping hubs, the pieces in the two kits are identical. Uh, I guess there's a colored tube on the upright of the carousels too. But um, you can build either side with all pieces. So if you bought a red half field and you wanted to practice like it's a blue half of the blue side of the field, you certainly could just ignore the color. You, you'd have to rearrange your carousel. I think that's the only physical difference. Rearrange the bar barriers maybe a little bit. But you should be prepared to play on either red or blue side. Again, rookie rookie questions. So in, in a remote event, you play on whatever you have. In a hybrid or traditional event, you're going to end up playing on both. So roughly 50% of your matches will be on red and 50% will be on blue. Do capstones get put on the carousel if they are not brought onto the field during autonomous? Yes. Right, so if, if you don't place your, your team shipping, shipping element on the barcode during setup, you're supposed to put it into the loading dock, right? So it'll live in the loading dock, waiting till end game, at which place it follows the same rules as the ducks into the field during end game. Except it could never be picked up by the opposing alliance, is that right? Exactly, yes. What material can that be made from? Uh, part one of the game manual has a whole description. It generally follows the same rules as the robot construction, minus space. So for example, batteries, electronics. Right. Basically any non-toxic material. Can you describe around the difference between something falling out of the robot actively versus launching? Are there rules around that? So this is that hypothetical again, and it, it boils down to what do the referees see? Um, and judgment calls like that are part of why we spend a lot of time working with training referees, but they're gonna make a call based on what they observe or what you do. Uh, it, it's usually a little bit obvious. If you're intentionally ejecting something, it kind of obvious that it was purposeful. A wheel falling off is kind of obvious wasn't purposeful. Unless, of course, your wheel flies off every single time you play the game. And then it starts to look like, why are they doing that? Right. It seems to be intentional. You know, it, intent is a really hard piece to judge. We, we've somewhat intentionally, wait, there's that word again. We've somewhat purposefully uh, designed the rules to not use the word intent. But the basic truth is, in this situation, that's what the referees are going to be looking at. Did you mean it? During the end game, can a robot sit? Can a robot sit by the carousel and repeatedly deliver the ducks one at a time to the floor? Is there anything that says they have to like move away from the contact, or can they just sit there and and load ducks? They could sit there and uh, drop the ducks one at a time. But remember, the human player has to wait until the carousel stops before they get that next duck in place. Which the robot could stop the carousel. Yeah. The robot could stop the carousel. Spin it slowly and stop it. That would be an efficient way to deliver all of the ducks. You, you certainly could have a duck special. <laughs> and remember, the ducks have to hit the floor before the robot can pick them up. And they, they don't score until they've hit the floor. Oh, okay. So the delivery so doesn't end until they've hit the floor. Yeah, so capstones or ducks have to hit the floor. Once they hit the floor, they're uh, able to be interacted with without any constraints, one at a time. Yeah. Great. There is a question I, I, around the Andy Mark not having 
block and cargo, at least per the website. So I'm actually, I pulled up the IndyMark site under FTC uh, and I looked for both partial red or blue and remote red or blue. And there's a second question uh, that you can say that scoring elements are included or scoring elements are not included. In both cases, ducks are included. The difference is whether you get the uh, cargo or boxes that are repeat elements from previous years. Is that your understanding as well? Yeah, the, the, the not including the scoring elements was an option for teams that have history to allow them to save a little money by reusing some of the pieces. Yeah, so I see that as a, an option on the Andy Mark site. So the coach that says that there's not an option or that it's not included, you need to actually select the drop down that says scoring elements are included in order to get those uh, blocks and balls or cargo. When you first read the question, I kind of understood it differently. Okay. That there wasn't an option to buy just blocks and cubes by the cargo pieces. Ah, yes. So I don't, I don't do you, know. Yeah, and so if you do a DIY carousel and a DIY barrier, I don't see an option to just buy shipping hubs as an example. So in the past, they've had that option. Even from our perspective, uh, occasionally we get damaged game elements during the season. So if they don't have it yet, I would guess they will soon. Okay. Got a lot of penalty type questions around tipping uh, shipping hubs and if freight falls out um, and when does that considered a penalty so for example with the blue one as it is right now if I just happen to drive by but I don't interact with that blue one say I'm a red robot and something drops out of it am I going to get penalized if you did not touch it then you're not going to get penalized is it your gravitational pull that's that's pulling it out? Let's see. I have a magnet, a, a really high magnet that uh, the, <laughs> that is coming by, and they are you got just a happen to be attracted. Then, to then, the then you, there's a, if you're driving fast enough that your slipstream is causing the shipping hub to wobble, we, we might call, give you penalties too. Bigger been a long time. Do ducks count as so really fast. <laughs> Maybe if someone had do a ducks count game. as field elements. Sorry, do ducks count as field elements counting toward the one element position or only the freight objects? The ducks are freight. They're just a weird shaped freight. What slightly squishy address this on measurement but uh, I've now had I think eight times somebody is asking that top uh, hub on the uh, Alliance specific shipping hub what is the height measurement of that we can just answer that one so that I can uh, <laughs> for reference they're in the game in yeah roughly 15 inches thank you Joe and how big what's the diameter while you got the measuring tape out. Twelve inches. Thank you, uh, Mark. When I when a team comes for the in-person visit, either today, tomorrow, Tuesday, or Friday, can they bring a robot? No. So we're working on tight schedule. You get fifteen minutes and five minutes to get in and out of the building. Um, I'm trying to minimize the amount of interaction everybody has with the field so that I can avoid having to do things like sanitizing between teams coming through. That's why you're, we've asked you to wear masks and that's why we're asking you to wear gloves. So um, no robot, please. There's some confusion on the Andy Mark between what a partial field includes versus a remote field include. Uh, they're actually separate options versus the full field. And I'm trying to go through uh, 
to figure out what the differences are, but do you happen to know? Uh, don't know. So I know the remote field doesn't include the shared shipping hub. Uh, so whether the partial field includes the shared or not, I don't know. So when I've ordered the full, one of my two half field sets included the shared. So maybe that's the difference. Uh, that would be something we need to ask of Andy Mark. Yeah, I have them up side by side trying to look at the differences. I think you're right. I think it's just the shared element, uh, the shared sh hub. And then how do I go from a partial or half to a full? Can I just order, like if I had a red, do I just order the, the blue? So it depends again on whether or not that shared shipping hub is included with one of those two partials. Okay, another question about the in-person, about bringing robot parts to test driving or to test how they interact with that barrier. Can I bring different kinds of wheels with me to the in-person? No, this isn't a chance for you to come in and test your engineering ideas. This is a chance for you to come and get familiar with the field, the game elements and pieces like that. You can do your brainstorming on your time with your field. Very easy to make the barriers out of some PVC and a couple of PVC fittings. You do it in five minutes. This is all just press fit and held down with zip tie. Okay, so in Appendix D of the game manual, it only shows randomized positions for one half of the field. If I'm in the other half, how do I actually uh, figure out like the barcodes? So what it shows is the view of the robot, right? The robots are gonna see the same view whether they're on red or blue. So position one is to your left, position one, two is in the center, position three is to your right, to the robot's right. And it doesn't matter if you're on red or blue. So the hint there is it'll look opposite from the audience's perspective, but from the robot's perspective, it's identical. So right now, it's all on three, is that right? So a blue one, yes. Yes. which is yes. closest yes. to the audience, is actually the furthest away from the audience in red. That's right. Where do you score? So you score on the shared shipping hub at any time, your alliance hub at any time, or your shipping zone in your little blue or red box in the front. Is that right? Storage unit. Storage, Storage unit. unit. Thank you. Here, 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 and here. The, the shared one is not any time. It's not available during class. So those, so those are where freight score. Robots can also score uh, during the at the end of each of the periods, end of autonomous, as well as the end of the match in the storage unit at, or in the warehouse. So there's scores for being partially in and completely in. Uh, this is a great question on the NorCal site. Um, I only see the DIY guide for 2020 season, not for the 2021 season. Where where does it exist? So part of the reason it's not on the NorCal site yet is the links for us to link to weren't published yet. So those will get updated and we'll have links to the current season, but you can always go to the firstinspires.org website look in the FTC program pieces under game material, game and season, and all those DIY guides will be listed there. That's, Joe asked the question silently if they're done. 
I think they're done. <laughs> or not updated. I think uh, I heard a rumor that there will be some game updates coming. Uh, <laughs> well, I know, like, for example, the DIY perimeter is the same. Right, so that, that one is already done and has been done for a couple of years. It's the question about how much of the game specific pieces the DIY is done for. So I know we're we're probably way over time and it's uh, lunch, but uh, I think this is a good question that we haven't addressed in anything yet. Uh, in the game manual, it talks about something called an autonomous bonus. Isn't that just regular points? It's bonus points. So how are bonus, bonus points? Are, yeah, how how is that counter, counted? So do did you do the scoring of the preload block into the right level? based on the position of the duck or team shipping element on the barcode. And so it's there's the, the single bonus, which is I did it based on the duck location. There's the double bonus, which is I did it based on the team shipping element location. So I think that's the last truly unique question. Um, there's, a, I'm sure, a ton of material. So what's in game part manual part one versus what's in game manual part two? And does part one get updated with any information now that part two has been released? Uh, possibly. The, the, in years past, when we've had a, a team game element, sometimes we've updated the game manual part one to include the description more completely by name and things like that. But basically, Game Annual Part 1 has the things that are non-game specific. They're about building the robot, uh, what's a tournament like, what's judging like, uh, what's inspection like. Um, game Annual Part 2 has the pieces that are really about the game play. So general rules about the game um, and robot interaction, and then specific rules about this particular year's game. Now, as a warning, those manuals do occasionally get updated. So it's important to pay attention to those updates. When there's an update, there's usually a mention of it in the team blasts. Those will go out to all of the lead coaches. And I think there's a way of signing up to get the team blasts too. I'm not sure. Yeah. But all the team blasts are also archived on the First Inspires website. Great, thank you for that. Uh, if we we can continue asking some of the questions, uh, or we can drop here. Uh, there are some very subtle questions that I think probably we could take or not if we think we're done. What do you think? We could try one or two. I, I do have to make sure I leave enough time to eat before the one o'clock rookie crash course. Okay. Uh, there's a request to move, uh, let's say, one of the Alliance hubs and show how the actual robot starts and how that actually, like the barcode in the back half of the field, it's not visible from this angle. So it's in line with the front half barcode. It's just right here, very close to the barrier. So uh, is this is correct, right? So this is uh, position three from yes. the view of the robot. And where does the robot start? The two robots, where does, for that alliance? So the rules require them to be against the wall. This, you know, not, not against, but some part of the robot touching the wall. Where on the wall is up to the team. There's some rules about not being in the warehouse and not touching the, bar the barriers and not touching the carousel. But other than that, the whole wall is theirs to play with. Okay. I think we've addressed ducks being freight off often enough. I'm going to skip over those. Uh, we also demonstrated how many of the weighted boxes it takes to ship to do the shared shipping 
but uh, I think the experiment on the alliance will have to come from the teams themselves uh, for tipping over their alliance hubs. Um, there's a question around how many different autonomous programs a robot should have. Uh, and I think this is an interesting one, probably from a rookie team of trying to understand like where they should start with their um, their programming. So the, the how many is how much do you want to think about autonomous strategies, right? So you know, if I was sitting down and looking at it, it kind of makes sense that you'd start off by saying, oh, I need at least two. Right? I'm going to start at the front position or I'm going to start at the back position. And then I might say, oh, I might want to have different programs if I'm red and blue for that. So now I'm going to multiply by two from up to four. Then I'm going to say, oh, well, maybe I want to delay a little bit to allow my alliance partner to play the, sh the shared shipping hub or the, the alliance shipping hub before me. Um, so maybe I'll have two or three more. Right, a five second delay or a 10 second delay. So it really depends on how you envision your robot working with your alliance partner during the autonomous period. Now you could think of, oh, I'm gonna do each of those different start positions and I'm gonna play the, the alliance hub first and then go do the carousel. You could have another variant that's, I'm going to go do the Alliance Hub and then go park in the, the storage unit. I'm going to have go do the, the Alliance Hub and then go park in the warehouse. So it depends on how you want to branch your thinking. How does scoring work on that warehouse in the back? So I think there's a misunderstanding that there's no middle warehouse, that that shared shipping hub is not a warehouse. That's correct. The, the, the warehouse is outlined by the white. This is not a, a warehouse. Okay. And how does the scoring on that shared shipping hub work? Do I get points for every thing I put into it or just if I get, tip it? You get two points for every piece of freight you put on. And then at the end of the, of the match, if it's touching your, uh, your side, you get, I forget how many points. So you want to you want to pull it to your side, right? And what if it rotates? Um, it rotate? If it rotates a little while you're doing it, that's okay. But if you're intentionally rotating it to make it advantage, you're going to get penalized. Is there room for the robot to get completely out of the warehouse with their cargo to then score it in that shared hub? Depends how big your robot is. <laughs> Not if it's 18 you, inches, right? Which is, I think we measured it, right? It's exactly pretty much 18 inches here. Here, you have plenty of room, right? And if you go towards the corner, corner, uh, there's even bigger. But you do have to be completely out of the warehouse carrying your freight before you can score it. Yes, that's correct. And remember, the warehouse is the white tape, not the barrier. one other fun resource for everyone um, if you're having trouble figuring out how to make really nice marks on your um, preload boxes uh, Joe put together a really fun little model that you can 3d print it serves as a very nice little template for making those uh, marks so that should show up as part of the resources available from the first inspire site Joe is the expert DIYer. What other tips and tricks does Joe have up his sleeve for this year? Um, there's actually another DIY tool for putting the tape on as well. And that should be in the guide somewhere, I believe, right? In, in particular, the taping for the, the shared shipping hub is a little bit complicated because you're putting down a bunch of two inch squares of tape. So, you know, try to get it perfectly and accurate. Um, again, the little tool helps just get the tape lined up nicely. 
If I tilt my own shipping hub and things fall out of it, do I get penalized? Uh, yes and no. There's no penalties per se, but all of the stuff that fell out no longer scores. But then I can re-score it, is that right? But also, they're on the field, they're fair game. And you can only score them one at a time. Right. Uh, just confirming that a capstone or the whatever element that the team brings is not freight, and I can hold that and a piece of freight simultaneously. That is correct. Do the field barriers move when you roll over them? No. They're, they're actually anchored underneath the mat with a plate. So every place you see a joint or an end, there's one of these plates holding the barrier down. So Animark did a whole lot of testing, running a whole lot of different robots over it. Um, and we were pretty happy with the result. The plates are a little bit of a hassle to get underneath the tiles and lock down. Um, and you have to be careful about getting them into the right spots but they do a really good job of holding the barrier down. As with all things, anything can move if you apply enough kinetic energy, but it would be a lot. And, and you <laughs> might get to talk to the referees if you do that. I think this is another probably rookie question. Um, do the duck placement in the barcode, does that happen before you put your robot down on the field? We can't hear Rick. If Rick, we can't hear you. Uh, the, the robots get put down, everything is set, and then the randomization happens. So by default, the ducks will be in the middle position uh as a part of the normal field reset and so during the the pre the last steps before the match begins referees and field personnel are going to ask all the teams if they're ready that means you've already set your autonomous program to run and you're just waiting to hit the run button uh, um, then the randomization will happen and then the the announcer will count the match in this is a good time to note for rookie teams that your autonomous program you're not picking it after the randomization. So you wouldn't have like three different autonomous programs, one for each barcode position. Your program has to decide that. You don't, as a human, get to choose program one, program two, program three after the randomization is happening. Yeah, we, we know all you kids are smart. We're looking for smart robots too. And and first it's supplying TensorFlow to identify those ducks, right? It's they've already programmed it, so you just have to pull up TensorFlow and it will know it will see a duck. But it won't know your shipping thing, right? It will not know your team shipping element. And that's why we give you an extra bonus because if you want to use your team shipping element, you have to train TensorFlow to see your shipping element. There's a question about this this topic. Can you talk options about how robot can determine the barcode? Vuforia sensors, or is there an SDK for FTC Vuforia? So um, it's important to understand the two different vision packages that are part of the SDK. The Vuforia software is really good at doing what's called localization. Where am I? The target images that are around the outside edge of the field those are from Vuforia. So the Vuforia model in the SDK is trained on those images. And if, if the robot can see one of them, it can know where it is in the field, X, Y, Z, and angle, uh, down to like an inch or less. It's, it's really quite accurate. TensorFlow is an object recognition library. So the default SDK includes um, a machine learning model that understands how to identify ducks. 
if you're going to add your team shipping element in, you need to build a model that knows how to identify your team shipping element if you want to use TensorFlow. But there are many different ways to sense that, that um, model. You could use other vision packages, uh, OpenCV. Uh, you could use different sensors, maybe an ultrasonic rangefinder, maybe a color sensor. I mean, there, there's a, a lot of different ways to deal with it. You don't have to use vision, but vision is certainly an interesting topic. You could probably stick a magnet in the top of that to pass a sensor over top. There are magnet sensors. Uh, so, can the robot tip over the hub, like, or does it, is it like a weeble, the wobble, but they don't fall over? I mean, will the shipping hub actually land on its side, and then what happens if that actually occurs? Oh, I think you probably got a penalty. Even if it's my own? Even if it's your own. Right, so some of the game elements, we need to make sure they survive. In the course of a tournament, they're going to be played, you know, 30, 35 times to satisfy all the matches for the teams that are there. And so, uh, overly rough gameplay, this might be an example of, is likely going to end up, at, at the minimum, a conversation with the, the referees. At a, at a larger case, it may involve penalties as well. And no one is going to tip it back over during the middle of the match. The uh, robot could. It could end up with some grab, grasp, grapple problems as a result of that. So uh, my advice is be careful around the hooks. Uh, there's more around, uh, in general, a lot of questions around having to exit the warehouse completely. So here's another hypothetical. Uh, so I'm in the warehouse. I drop the block. The block or cargo or freight exits. And I think what we talked about is that the robot has to exit in order for that piece of freight to count. Um, you don't have to bring the freight back into the warehouse in order to do that. So the, the, we're still working out what the final guidance for it is. But the intention is robot starts completely out comes completely in, picks up a freight, freight and robot transition completely out in order to be able to play that freight. So whether they go out at the same time or not isn't necessarily important. It's did all the pieces meet the constraint. Great. Uh, so again, some measurement questions. How big is the different heights on the shipping hub, which I think we said is in the game manual? How yeah. big is the warehouse, the storage the unit? Yep. So all of those dimensions are in the game manual part two, which is on the firstinspires.org site. Okay, here's a new question. Uh, for the bonus points, when I park inside the warehouse, uh, can I go inside fully and then get out of the warehouse box? Ah, so I think this is an end match condition. Uh, so do I have to actively be inside fully the warehouse to get those points, or do I just merely have to enter the warehouse during the end game? It's uh, very much about where you end. So the um, storage unit and the warehouse things are about where your robot is at the moment things are done. Um, so if you enter and exit, you don't get the points and you don't get them repeatedly from re-entering again or anything like that. It's, it's just the once right at the end of the game. So watch for words that are capitalized as part of what the definitions of things. Those mean those are particular words. So in that scoring option, the word is parked. And if you look at the definition of parked, I believe it is stationary. 
right? So in order to earn the points, the robot has to be stationary at a place at the end game. Parking is like in a car, right? So you have to turn off the ignition, right? <laughs> the wheels can't be running. The robot needs to stop, yes. Great. Well, that's all of the unique questions. I know that we've talked a long time and, and repeatedly around ducks being freight, um, that there are three kinds of freight, and then the unique element that is the team's shipping element. Is there anything else, Mark or Joe particularly, or Rick or Jeff, that your surprise haven't come up that you think the audience probably should think about? particularly for our rookies. Um, I think one thing around the team shipping element is that it has to be fully supported by the pole. This does not count, right? So it has to be there. And the other element has to be fully supported by this element or that pipe. So you can put another one on top of it, right? Yep. Yeah. Except the, the ship, the um, team shipping elements cannot be cannot use any of the uh, game elements. So you can't use the duck. You can't use a you can't use a, a block. You can't use a ball. That's right. Nothing that that's basically this season's game element. Right. Anything I, else? I can't think of anything else. No, there's great questions. Yeah, that's some good ones. They would be allowed to print an analog to a duck, right? Like a 3D printed duck. It's not actually the duck, but it looks like a duck. Not if it's confusing to referees. Yeah. Uh, it's specifically about confusing us. Yeah. So it is past, a low bar. Yeah, years past, we've, we've asked that it be visually distinct. So it could be a yeah. mongo duck. Pink duck. Or a micro green duck. duck. <laughs> or a green duck. <laughs> uh, maybe but, anything but about the... There's also a size the... requirement in game manual one, right? No no smaller than yep. there's three a by size. three by four or two by two by four. Or but four it could be a big, big duck. That can fit on a pole. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot uh, of duck things here. So. Oh, a lot of duck <laughs> The Buphoria elements, uh, anything unique about them? Uh, we haven't really asked any questions around the visual targets around the field. That would be the only other thing that I think we haven't really covered very well. They, they are four distinct images, and they go in specific spots on the field. So the ability to localize relies on them being in the proper places on the field. Right, and and those images are on the FTC Inspires uh, First Inspires website. You That's can right. print your own. And the, the the start of the document includes instructions on how to print them. So if you follow those instructions, they print nicely. They are in uh, sheet protectors mounted with Velcro dots on the outside of this. Field. Excellent. Well, I think. We are there, and I think Bob France gets the last uh, statement. He's going to duck out for lunch. <laughs> Ta -dum -bum. Uh, with that, I think everyone have a great season. Uh, what's next, Mark? Uh, one o'clock is the rookie crash course. Um, it's targeting rookie coaches. And then if you take a look at the NorCal FTC website, the rest of the workshops will show up there. There's a workshop starting at one, at two, at three, at four, and at five. And then for some of you, I'll see you between three and six. Here at the if field. You've, if you've walking. registered. Yeah, if you've registered. Don't show up otherwise. Only if you've registered. And as a warning, um, I have at least one coach that registered for more than one session tomorrow. So I sent you an email um, late last night. If you don't remove one of your two tickets, I'm going to remove both of your tickets for the warning I gave everybody. One slot each to make sure we get as many teams the opportunity to come see the field as possible. Yeah, and as of a few hours ago, there was one slot still available for today, several for tomorrow, and all of Tuesday and Friday still available. Yep. 
There's a and question about how people can join the rookie coach, rookie crash course coach, that one. Um, if you go to norcalftc.org, right on the main page are all the links to all of the afternoon workshops. Yep, it's a Zoom session. So if you just follow the link, it'll take you right to the session. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day and a great season. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> good ducks. Yep, good luck. Good duck. Have fun. Thanks, everybody. We're checking out. Thanks, Diane. Thanks. Good, Joe. Good seeing Joe Prado from Delaware. Awesome. Hi, Carol. Hi. Hey, how you doing?